Hi guys and welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny and as always I thank you very much for choosing to spend some time with me. This week I am talking about primarily this top um, which is the Vivian Shao Chen Lawrence top. I have decided uh, after my video from a couple of weeks ago about indie designers that I haven't tried yet I decided to just go through the list Sorry, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to hear that. The dogs are going crazy about something. Anyways, um, I've decided to just go through my list and try to sew a pattern from each of those companies and see how I like them and give you guys uh, a, like an update so you know how how I'm feeling about them. The Lawrence top is uh, two, has two versions. This one, which is a tank top with a slight V. It's sort of a rounded V. The other one is more of a round neckline, and I believe it's a three-quarter sleeve top. I have not made that one yet. I made this one twice. Um, I will say, what do I have to say about this? Okay, so it has bust darts. Um, it has a really nice deep hem, and the neckline and arm holes are both uh, finished off with bias tape. So... For the first one, which I'll show you here, this one I made in the remains of a piece of white linen I had from another project, and I really like this top. However, you'll, you'll be able to see that the neckline in the white one is a little bigger <clears throat> and gappier on me, and that is because I neglected to um, stay stitch my neckline and my armholes. You can also see that the armholes stretch out a little bit, so if you're using a fabric like that, it, it, regardless of what fabric you're using, I recommend stay stitching the neckline and the armholes. I did do that on this version. This one is made from a vintage tablecloth that I've had forever and ever. My friend Marsha, I, I feel like I was showing her this and she was like, oh, do you want to cut that up? And I was like, well... I don't know if I want to cut it up because I really loved it as a tablecloth. However, I don't use tablecloths, so I decided to go ahead and cut it up. I do really like it. I on this one, I put the bias bindings on the front because if you can see here, it's mostly white up here, and this is not a great. Uh, I mean, it's not a bad color for me, but it's not my favorite. So um, I thought it would be nice to have a little bit of color around the top, which is why I put the bias bindings on the front. Now. <clears throat> Vivian has in her instructions a way to put the bias binding on for a v-neck where you start at the back, you go around the front, you create a little, almost like a little dart or pleat here at the center front. I did that for the first one and I found it to be just really fiddly. And then additionally you have a seam in the back and a seam in the front of your v and that seemed a little extraneous to me. So I did it a different way and I have a quick tutorial for you here on how I did that. Okay, so here you can see I have my top all ready. Um, the directions tell you to start your bias binding at the back and go around and then they give you directions for putting a V in via a, like a little pleat. Um, also they tell you to put the binding on the outside, sew it to the outside and fold it to the inside because I really want a little more color up here. I'm going to fold mine to the outside and hopefully when I do that I will get a little more color around the edge here just depending on where it all falls I guess. Um, okay so the way we're going to do it is we're going to start here at the center front. Um, I am going to turn mine inside out because I am going to sew, sew mine to the wrong side and fold it to the right side. So it's easy enough. The center of my top is right here. Um, now a couple of things I've done already. I measured my pattern, not my top, but my actual pattern. I measured from the center front to this, to this um, seam allowance line right here. And you can see here, I've marked that, that's nine inches. On the back, I did the same thing, and that's seven inches. So the back, I'm gonna double, that's gonna be 14 inches. 
So I've already prepared my bias binding by folding one edge under three eighths of an inch. I measured from this pin to this pin is nine inches. And then this pin to this pin is 14 for the back. And then another nine inches from this pin to this pin. So now I am going to pin this starting with this pin right here. You can see I have an extra here. I'm going to put this right here at the center front like this. So it's going to be at an angle. Hope you can see that. But it's right there at the nine inches. That's going to go right there. And then I know that this, that my bias tape is the right measurement. So I can see if my shirt has stretched at all. And that looks, that's my shoulder seam right there. And it looks like it's just about perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that in place. I'm going to pin pretty much on the seam line. Just right here. And then I'm just going to go around to the back and do the same thing. This shoulder gets pinned right here. And you can see it looks like my back has stretched a little bit. It's a little bit bigger than my binding. So I'm just going to ease it in there. Now when I get around to the front, I want these two pins to match up. So I'm going to put this one right here. Now you can see exactly where that needs to get stitched right along the front, which is right here. Now before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and a little closer right there. I'm going to clip off this extra, making sure my bias pieces are lined up. I'm just going to cut this off with a little bit of a seam allowance, like that. Now, I'm going to unfold these edges, like that. And you'll see they're going to make a little point there. And I'm going to go ahead and sew that right there. whatever that seam allowance is, it looks like it's about three eighths of an inch. Um, the easiest way to do this is to get rid of a couple of pins here and just take this over to the sewing machine and sew that on like that. And I don't know if you'll be able to see that it. it's pretty subtle, but you're going to go down this way and then make a little point right here where the fold is. Okay, now I have um, sewn that and I've pressed that open. I'm going to fold that fold back into place just like that and I'm going to repin it. And I can see that seam needs to go right at the center front and it's going to fit perfectly. Now I am going to go back to my sewing machine and sew this down all the way around. Once I'm done sewing it, I'm going to press all of my stuff, all this stuff. I'm going to press the seam allowance and the binding away from my shirt. Okay, we're back to the right side of my top now, and you can see my bias binding is on there. Now, if you are doing this the other way and folding it to the back, you're definitely going to want to understitch your uh, seam allowance to your binding. I'm not going to do that here because it would show on the outside, and my seam allowance is now cut too small to try to repress it to the other side. So anyways, now we're just going to um, fold it on our crease line on our seam line there and pin it down. You can see this is not a super sharp V, but if you're doing a top that does have a sharper V, it works exactly the same. This um, slant line, when you cut the bias binding for the front, it's just gonna be at a stronger angle. So now I'm just gonna pin this all the way down and, um, and stitch it down right along the edge, stitch it right along the edge of my binding there. And I think that will look good. I'm glad I did that because I like this color here. Okay, so there you go. Um, I hope you guys find that helpful. It's not 
um, as obvious, like I said, on this particular top because this is sort of a shallow V. Now I will say the other thing is I did stay stitch this top, but you can see I still have a little gapping around the neck here. So I am going to have to do, I guess it's called a shallow chest adjustment on this. Um, just a teeny bit, I think. So I'll do that on my next version. I love this top and I'm definitely going to make it again. I will also definitely be making the longer sleeve version when we get further in the year, closer to when I'll be wanting to wear sleeves again. Now the other thing that I'm wearing in these pictures is my very first pair of Sew House 7 free range slacks. This pant also comes in two versions. There's a uh, longer version with a narrower leg that gets rolled up. And then there's this version that I'm wearing here, which is a cropped version, and um, it is a wider leg. This pant has options for pockets in the back. I, I did make this also, I made both versions, I just haven't had a chance to take a picture of the, um, the, the narrower leg version yet. The narrower leg version, I did put the patch pockets on the back, on the blue one I didn't. Um, but they're there, the pockets are there if you want them. I really like the way they do the front pockets on this. I like the shape of the front pocket and the tiny little facing that goes across the front, um, of the pocket opening. This, see if you can see it. This part right here. Um, this pant has a side panel. It has a front, a back, and one side panel, which is really, interesting and it gives you options if you want to mix and match fabrics for example um it also has a really wide uh, elastic waistband which i like a lot it does not have a ton of ease so there isn't a ton of gathering around your waist so the wider elastic works fine um also i just wanted to say again i'm five three and i did not shorten these pants so if you're taller than me just be aware of that because it is meant to be a cropped pant. On me, it hits pretty much right at the top of my ankle, which is where I wanted it. Um, but just keep that in mind so you know where you are in terms of what length you want. Um, I think, I think that is it for this week, except I have a question for you guys. So, for the last several months, I've been really more into more simple garments with bolder fabrics you may have noticed um and i'm having a hard time with jewelry i feel like i don't have any jewelry to go with this stuff for ages i've been into some really small fine like delicate jewelry and i feel like they just are not right for these things i feel like i might need some bolder jewelry maybe it's my inner 20 year old resurfacing once again but um yeah so this week I ordered a couple of things from two different people on Etsy and I'm really considering these earrings here from Rachel Comey. Anyways, I'd be curious to know what you guys think about jewelry and accessories for these garments. Next week I think we'll be moving on to another designer from my list which is Tropical Research. I think I will be doing the baby doll dress. I'm almost sure that's what it'll be. <laughs> We'll see how my mood strikes me later in the week. Um, and that is it for me this week, you guys. As always, I thank you very much for being here. And I wish you happy sewing. Mm -hmm.